Everything I'm going to show you today was impossible five years ago. I'm going to talk to you about a new technology that lets us look inside your brain and look at the circuit diagram, a technology that Michelle Obama referred to as high-definition uh, imaging. This is a technology that perhaps in the next decade may benefit a member of your family. But let me start with a strange phone call I had. So the FBI wants to urgently talk to you about your work. Now, I don't know about you, but what went through my mind wasn't necessarily good. So I call it back the number. Um, Dr. Walter Schneider, what, what would you like to know? Um, I'm from the FBI Victims Unit dealing with the Boston Marathon bombing. And we had some 250 people there. And the Army says, you've got the best technology to look inside their brains. Can we send them? Yes. And they came. I'm going to talk to you about this technology. This is a technology uh, that deals with one of the major health care costs that we have in our nation. The capability, somebody, this is running on auto, so if you could uh, switch it so it is not auto-forwarding on whoever's running the slides, that would be helpful. Um, uh, the, uh, what we deal with is uh, tumors, neurodevelopment disorders such as autism, neurodegenerative disorders um, uh, such as Alzheimer's. That impacts 10.4 million people uh, a year. And to put that in perspective, that's 1,200 people in this hour, the student body of the University of Pittsburgh today. That's the number of people impacted. We want to build a technology to look at the circuit diagram of the brain to understand it. We, this is a big reach. The technology doesn't yet exist. We have technology for x-rays in terms of um, uh, what bone is broken. We have something called high-definition fiber tracking that wants to look at the pattern of the cables of the brain. So after trauma, something breaks. Uh, in the case of a car crash, maybe you lose your lights, uh, the radio. Uh, something broke in the circuit diagram. Uh, after trauma for a loved one, you maybe lose language, affect control, motor function. These are all things we want back. Now, if your family needs the technology, you want to be able to say what's broken, what does it mean, and what do we do about the lost functions. So the technology we use is an MRI-based technology. So we put a person in a magnet. We then do something called tag labeling of the water molecules. So we use the machine to label a given part of the brain, and we watch how the water spreads and it spreads along the cables. And then we build a circuit diagram of an individual uh, within that system. So that uh, our goal here now is we start with a structural image. The colors you see are the connections of that system. We're still fighting the uh, uh, sequence here. Uh, and uh, what we then do is we can take, this is the language cable of the brain, and you can see the um, uh, projection of uh, uh, the cable. So each of these places where it ends is where it's picking up information. We can then take an individual and take the cables of their brain and dissect. This is where you hear things. This is where you say things. This is where you connect what you see to what you say. And this is the interlink of the processes that you're working with. So we can then build a circuit diagram in about the time of this talk. That is, in 10 minutes, we can scan and build this capability. Now, we're, to, we're creating a personalized circuit diagram for locations within each of these cables of the brain to understand the bandwidth of those components, to look at the different cables, just like bones in your uh, skeleton, to identify the processes. Now, I'm going to talk about three applications. The first is clinical. When a neurosurgeon has to go in, they're going to cut something out. Better it not be language. 
We want to know where the cables are with an individual. So I'm going to review a few cases. Here is an example of a push. That is, the tumor pushed it out on the right there. And then they're going to be very assertive. Take it all out. Okay? Uh, here is an example of guidance in neurosurgery. Uh, so you could go down, you could go to the side. Whichever way you go, you're going to take something out, as illustrated in the middle. And then on the right is what the result was. So we can predict what's going to be taken out. Because again, we want to take out the least damaging piece of the brain. Here is a woman who had uh, a tumor around the system that controls all her motor function. Had they taken it out, she would have been paralyzed. What we did is we instrumented uh, in the OR that green line is the probe of the surgeon. So we can see where it is. And they very gently aspirated uh, the tumor. Think of it as it's like trying to vacuum clean a curtain, but never move it. Because if you move it, she loses control of her limbs. So the idea is that we, by seeing the cables and knowing where we are, we can be more precise. Here's a woman who went to, uh, was uh, progressively being paralyzed on one part of her body. Um, uh, went to several uh, places. They said, we can't do anything because it's going to do too much damage. So she came to us and we looked closely at the tracks and we found that there was an existing hole about where the problem that she had was within that. Robert Freelander, the neurosurgeon, said, I can do the repair through that hole without doing more damage. And here you see, uh, uh, after the surgery, this is his cut, the surgical knife, where he went in and did the repair. Now, uh, what happens with this high-definition fiber tracking, uh, Robert says that Ashley could not move half her body. We needed to operate on her. We understood uh, where all the normal fibers are. Then we can avoid those to look at this. And let, let me let Ashley describe the result. Where I am right now is amazing. To actually get out and live on my own, I didn't think it was possible. I am cooking, driving, and have a full-time job. So to go from progressive paralysis to cooking, driving, and a full-time job, we had that capability because we could see what to miss, how to get in to repair the damage. My second topic is autism, uh, where one of the things that happens is in development, sometimes the cables grow in differently. Uh, if you make really interesting images, all of a sudden 60 Minutes in Discovery magazine show up on campus, which is an interesting experience. And I had the privilege of working with Temple Grandin, a noted person uh, uh, in autism, and we scanned her brain, and we looked at the different cables that we had in that uh, brain. And what we found was that part of her brain was down 99%. Cable was 1% of what it is in your brain, and another part was 300% higher than what it would be in the normal brain. She is an example of a neuroatypical, different. Something's better, something's worse. What we want to do when somebody presents with autism is we want to have the ability to identify uh, for that individual, well, can we map the person's language system? Because it's really important in the first five years to give this child the ability to say, I want to go to the bathroom or I want to be fed. What have I got to work with? Identify the approaches that work, target rehabilitation, and measure the growth, finding out which strategies work better. My major effort is in traumatic brain injury with my colleague David Okonkwo. If you have a major traumatic brain injury in Western Pennsylvania, he's the guy that's going to see you and we'll do the surgery if it's needed. We want to know what tracks are broken, whether it is from falls, auto injuries, war wounds. Uh, what are the cables and what are their current states? And I'm going to give you two rules to help you understand how we can see traumatic brain injury. The first is symmetry. If you see an individual um, and they look like the, 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 the brain and the, and the body are enormously symmetric. And if you see somebody like this, you can guess that they had trauma sometime in their uh, life in terms of the hand elements. Well, we look at that and we look at their uh, systems so that you can see these colors are these cables. 
and there's a hole. It doesn't have the symmetry. So rule number one is loss of symmetry. Rule number two is trauma reduces uh, branching. So in the upper left, you see a Central Park after Hurricane Sandy went through. It blew away the small branches. We look at the branching, and in the lower right, you see a special forces person who had 400 blasts. Blow, blow. And it takes out the small fibers. So we can look at these elements. Now, what I'm going to do is show you some images, and let's see, now that I've described what you can look for, can you see it? So here we go. We have three uh, individuals. Look in the middle of the upper uh, set, and note the red and the tan. A, B, or C, who's missing part of the red? Okay, that took all of 10 seconds. On the bottom, look at the middle. Uh, who's uh, missing those fine projections going up? Okay, you, in one minute of instruction, were able to do something that nobody in the planet could do three years ago, because we didn't have the technology. We can now see asymmetry. Uh, we can look at this change in arborization. This makes the invisible wound of war visible. This is very important, because if you take a Marine and you tell him uh, uh, that there's a problem in his brain, they're not going to say much. If, you, if he's worried about malingering, he may commit suicide. But if you show him the damage, then he, their family, and the clinicians all work as a team. If a loved one has a brain injury, you want to know what's broken, what does it mean, and uh, how do we cover functions? The standard MRI scan gives you something like this. This is of uncertain clinical significance. Not because they don't want to help. They don't yet have the technology. What we do is we give you a 20-page report, and for each cable, where is it? How, what is the integrity of that cable? We can show the patient their brain. Uh, the yellow here in the image are the, the images of uh, the fibers you can see on one side. You're missing a big chunk on the other side. Uh, it's fully there. So they can understand. Uh, so they can move on in the process. We want to understand the functional implications. So we had an individual who had an all-terrain vehicle accident, flipped over, in a coma for uh, 14 days, came out, uh, said, first thing he wanted to know, because he's paralyzed, I have his body, am I ever going to walk again? Reasonable question. Well, we say, if I plot your fibers, I can identify how much you have. And in the leg, you've lost 60%. And you have a little bit, uh, bit of function. Uh, in the arm, 67%. In the hand, 97%. Five, uh, five, this is very important because if we work on the hand and it's not going anywhere, we're going to blow this investment of 300 hours to try and bring back function. So we worked first on the leg. It came back. Then the arm came back. He's never opened his hand. By knowing what we have, we can give them expectations, and we can target the therapy. Now, I'm engaged in a big reach. I want to develop with my team members, my colleagues, something that humanity has never had, a map of the anatomical connectivity of any individual who it is useful for us to identify that. We need to drive innovation. The technology does not yet exist. It's going to be a five to 15 year effort. It's a reach to figure out how we do that. Now, I'm going to give you an example uh, that you are aware of for reaching, which is uh, the experience of technology to make possible remote driving vehicles in town, right? But I want to take you back 10 years ago uh, to the first vehicle challenge, where DARPA put up a bunch of hail bales, they ran off over the hail bales, they ran into the sides of the barriers, they flipped over, okay? Desert 15, robots zero. <laughs> the brilliance of the DARPA campaign was to expect, make a big reach, but expect failure. It's going to be a bumpy road. 
Well, they also provided incremental tests of capability. And what happened is that was an open competition. It brought world talent together. They accomplished steps in that process. Well, in Pittsburgh, we're doing what I call the Brain Connectivity Challenge. We want to create a new technology to make a map of each individual person's brain. This has to be done at a level of detail called the fasciculus. It sets of bundles of axons, typically several uh, thousand of those, and the individual cables, because we want to map for each individual what those are. Here's an illustration of the first challenge, which is we want to map from uh, 500 positions in each eye all the way through the first stage in the middle of the brain called the lateral geniculate of getting exactly the spatial topology of every one of those uh, fasciculi right. If we do this, we can then move on to other parts of the brain. Now, the problem is, remember DARPA, when it uh, did this uh, challenge, it could put up hay bales to make a sort of simulated little bitty road that's a little bit easy to work with. We needed our version of that, and we created what I call the textile brain wiring machine, where we have the ability of routing through a complex pattern at 10 micron accuracy the full path of one of these fibers, so I can see if the available technology can get the answer right, because now I have ground truth within that set. So up the hill, we built this machine, um, and it's running 64 fibers here, for a visual system. And what we're going to do is then map out 640,000 patterns of tubes within that set for an early visual system. Then we will work on the, t uh, then we will see can we image that where we know the right answer is of every one of those tubes. This is just an illustration of this, where each of these little lines is sort of the example of an axon that now is manufactured to look at that performance. We then do an we'll be doing an annual incremental challenge test. Can you find the track routes of the crossings that you're working with? How do the fasciculi come together, travel, and pull apart? Can we get that accurately? And then we will start with vision, but then go on the language, and then go on to uh, attention control. Just like DARPA, the first trick was, could you not run over the bale hails? Uh, or the, uh, uh, we will start with, can you get the eyeball to LGN right? Once we get that, we'll move on. So what I've described for you is a big reach. It's going to take harnessing world talent, including perhaps some of the people in this room. We want to put this together so we can deliver a technology that hasn't existed before. This reaches a big team effort, takes lots of people from different disciplines, including coders, by the way, as a big group of that uh, element, but researchers that uh, deal with both the neuroscience, the clinical issues, uh, the imaging issues within that set. So I'm going to leave you with my favorite uh, quote from Arthur C. Clarke. Any sufficiently advanced technology is indistinguishable from magic. Five years ago, everything that I showed you wasn't possible. Ten years ago from now, it may be routine. It's our job here to reach to make it happen. Thank you.